Kate Emma Smith from iFixit. Hi. I'm excited to be here today. I'm talking on behalf of a company called iFixit. Um, and if you haven't heard of us yet, that's OK. I'll get to that in a little bit. But my talk today is called Let's Fix It, how to repair, uh, how repair manuals can repair the world. So something I noticed um, as we were kind of all trickling into the auditorium today, which did not surprise me in the least, was that everyone in here, or, or I'm pretty sure everyone in here, has some form of an electronic on them, right? whether it's a phone, a laptop, camera, computer, um, tablet, and we, most of us will it, interact with some sort of electronic throughout every single day of our lives. And that's okay, I do it too. I love my things. I love my electronics. I, I, they connect me to my family and friends that are all across the world, across the countries. Um, they keep me a participant in social media and political movements that I'm invested in. Uh, they keep me updated on viral videos or I unashamedly say Lord Voldemort's Twitter feed. Great if you haven't already followed him. And when I bought a new phone a couple months ago, I did with what most people do. And that is I held that new phone like a firstborn child. I held it firmly yet nurturing. I protected it from concrete parking lots, from water glasses, from all the elements of the earth like a tigress in an urban jungle. And I did it because I knew that this piece of device, this very innovative, sleek, awesome device, would eventually break, or it could break, whether by a dead battery, a shot cracked screen, um, or even outdated software. And that's what happens, and that's the irony of the culture we live in today, is we, we have such beautiful technology, but it's not quite sustainable, and it's very breakable. Every year, we create over 20 million tons of e-waste per year. It's a, quite a lot of work we've been doing. Um, and most of this e-waste is going into perhaps developing countries where they're burned for their raw materials, like copper. And so this is a, oops, this is a picture of that happening. And children as young as six are doing this in these developing worlds with very little education about what they're actually um, accomplishing. And what that is is that they're not just burning it for copper and metal, but they're also breathing in terrible toxins like arsenic, mercury, and flame, retardant, and flame retardants. But that's what a lot of us do, and that's what um, Ryan and, and, and Reggie had said before, is that in about 18 months, you're probably going to throw away that phone. Um, if your computer, if your hardware um, is, is deteriorating, you're probably going to toss out that computer. And we've become used to that. We've become used to the throwaway culture that we've so gradually built up. All right, so what if I'm an ethical person, right? I, I like the planet. I want to be a good, good, good contributor. I want to be a good consumer. So I'm going to go for recycling. Recycling is not that great either. And the problem with that is because there are about 500 to 1,000 components in your electronics, depending on the complexity, complexity um, and metals that are alloyed together, that it's nearly impossible, very expensive, and very harmful for recyclers to separate. OK, so recycling, maybe not the best solution. So what iFixit has come up with is probably the most sustainable option that we have right now, and that is repair our right to repair. Um, iFixit is the largest international online free open source repair manual for everything. Quite a hefty title. Um, and it took us a while to get there. We just hit our 10th birthday uh, last year, which was very, very exciting. And we have thousands upon thousands of repair manuals, and not just for electronics. Um, yes, for your iPhone, for your computer things like that, but we also have it for clothes, for bikes, appliances, your refrigerators, your, your TVs. Um, and they're not just done by us. They're contributed by people all over the world, all over the globe. So why do we do it, or how can we do it, right? We're all afraid of warranties. You know, We don't want to go through that red tape, but the companies are telling us we can't. Genius bars are saying, oh, no, no, I'm a genius. I'll take care of this for you. I'll repair your phone. Don't, don't touch it. It's too complicated. Why well, fix it is not afraid to take things apart. We love getting a new device and just taking it down to its nuts and bolts to see its guts. What you're looking at right here is a Nikon D60 and all of its lovely innards. This is the new iPhone 5S that just came out in gold. 
also very impressive. And what we're very excited about is that last, a couple months ago, we just took apart a, the original Macintosh 128K, and we compared it to its, gen <laughs> its um, grand, grand, grandchild, <laughs> um, the Mac, the late 2013 Mac. So you can see just the differences in technology. And we love seeing this stuff. We love seeing how things work and tick, um, and how we can obviously repair them ultimately. So fixers all over the world. We have about, we have um, fixers in over 240 cu countries. And this year, 2013 alone, we had about 4 million users with 200, 200 million page views. It's a lot of traffic happening. So you can tell that there is a hunger in the world for repair. Absolutely. So who are these, who are these people? Well, they're not just um, technicians. They're not just um, those interested in, in education alone. But we have a variety. College students are using our, our material, right? Engineering students, which is really exciting. We, uh, a while back, we got a call from a, repair, radio, uh, a submarine repairman who is also using one of our tools as well, which is exciting. And also, Ms. Goldstein's kindergarten class, <laughs> they used our repair manuals to open about 11 different things, and we're very, very proud. We don't just do electronics, though. It, although that is kind of the, the seeds that planted iFixit, um, we, we get our hands on a lot of other things. Like I said, uh, clothing for one, bikes, bicycles. And recently, we started working with a group called Lifewater International, based out of California. And what they do is that they have gone into developing countries, into regions that have little to no access to clean water, and have provided that clean water for about 2.3 million people. Well, the problem with building pumps is that you can go into a region, build a water pump, and it looks great. You've got clean water, a happy community, and then you go. Well, like all things, that water pump is eventually going to bust. It's eventually going to break. And instead of rebuilding a whole other one, like, which has been done in the past, we need to start fixing them. We need to start making these water pumps sustainable so they can keep the high quality of life that they would have with clean water. So what we did, I fix it, like what we always do is we see a broken thing and we get in there and try to help. So we created a whole page dedicated to water pump repair. I'm not sure how many of you have water pumps, but if you ever did need to fix one, here you go. Um, we're very excited as well because all of these uh, repair manuals have been translated into the languages of the particular regions. And they're not only online for free, but you can also print them off in PDF versions. And so they're very accessible to everyone who would need them. So here in this picture um, in Zimbabwe, you see a couple gentlemen next to their water pump with water flowing into the, the orange gallon tank. And on the back of their bicycle, in the green toolbox is their toolbox and inside their repair manual when they're very excited. So we're proud of that. Next, we're also working with Patagonia. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Patagonia, it's an organic clothing company that creates garments and gears for the adventurous, the outdoors, and everything. And, and we love them. They love sustainability. They've already done a lot of great efforts, uh, like common, common, common Thread Partners and Worn Wear. Well, we joined up with them uh, back in November, and in, in, they had a worn wear party in all of these cities, Seattle, Portland, Chicago, unfortunately not Toronto, I'm sorry, we'll get there. Um, and these are photos from us helping people fix their clothes, right? We usually, uh, if you have a jacket, maybe a zipper bust or something, you might toss it out. Clothes aren't as expensive as, as electronics, um, but that's also something that we need to continue to be sustainable. Um, so we created, again, repair manuals for them. Um, Patagonia Repair, from your outwear bot bottoms, tops, luggage, and uh, fasteners. We want those people who are going out, you know, trekking the Alps, backpacking, all of that, to make their clothes last longer. Um, these, so it's important because, you know, you have a sentimentality with these pieces of clothing, and you want it to be... to. You want it uh, to continue on and not just, you know, toss out that cool jacket you went, you know, studying abroad with or something. So there's an example of one of the repair manuals if you haven't already seen it. As you can tell, there's the title, um, the author who wrote it, maybe a t an estimated time, difficulty, and video as well. 
Okay, so how can you get involved? It's really, really easy. Uh, writing repair manuals is a little intimidating, especially because most of us maybe have never opened up our laptops. Um, but there's, a, there's tons and tons of resources, especially at iFixit. Uh, you can write a guide, we'll help you to do that. Share your knowledge. There are a ton of forums that we host that, uh, from again, fixers all over the world that are asking questions, answering questions, things like that. So if you're visiting the tool library and you want to know, uh, which tool should I go out and pick? Ask, ask our forums, ask our fixers. They, they have the most hands-on experience and they're fantastic. Support your local repair shop. Um, it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to maybe go get your phone fixed at a, an outside source, right? Um, but we need to start supporting them. We need to make sure that they, that they have the, the, um, the community behind them and that we're using them. We're not just going and dumping it on the manufacturer like, say, Apple, and saying, okay, Apple, can you fix this for me? And they, all right, charge you $500. No, we need to start supporting the, the repair shops. We used to have repair shops, a lot of them, um, and they're kind of fading out. We're first starting to forget about them. You also should buy from companies that provide repair manuals. You would be astonished at how many corporations do not uh, give you accessible repair uh, n manuals based off of the fact that they call it proprietary information. Um, Apple is definitely one of them. There are other companies who, if you call them to ask, well, what, what tool or what uh, part do I need, they won't help you besides you just need to go there and have them do it yourself. Um, so definitely be aware. Uh, the, the app, what was it, by Bicon? Yeah, that's fantastic. That's awesome. We need to start doing more things like that. So I think together we need to um, start being more aware of the things that are in what it, what's what is inside of our things. Um, we need to start taking a more ownership of our stuff. Um, we can't rely on other people to fix our fix our stuff and then, you know, just take no responsibility for for e-waste or for, you know, the, the poor management of re recycling, things like that. Um, and I think if once we do that, once we start participating in the ownership of our stuff, we'll, we'll come out with a much more sustainable future. Thank you so much. <laughs>